Destin here for IGN Live at E3 2016 with Deej. How's it going, Deej? It's good to be here. It's Thanks for having me on the again. show. Yeah, uh, you're here to talk about Destiny. As usual. Yes, Rise of Iron is yes. on the way. Uh, why don't you tell us a little bit about the, the campaign and the SIVA and how all that works. I would love to. So uh, as you know, Destiny, Rise of Iron is uh, going to be a large expansion. Uh, to the world of Destiny. And when we say large expansion, we mean that we're telling new stories, we're sending you to new places to explore, uh, there's a new social space, uh, you have the opportunity to become an Iron Lord. And that is essentially the player fantasy that we're embracing with this new campaign. Uh, the story that we're telling is of the tradition of Lord Saladin and his legendary order of heroes. Uh, they were some of the original protectors of humanity before any of the current guardians were born. They looked out across old Russia from atop their mountain fortress at the top of Fellwinter Peak, and once upon a time, they confronted an ancient evil, some golden age technology that was like a technological plague, you know, it was ravenous and destructive, and uh, they sacrificed their very lives to contain that deep within the, the vaults below old Russia. And Lord Saladin, ever since, as the sole survivor of the Iron Lords, has been training the Guardians, as you well know, in the Iron Banner, that monthly ritual in the Crucible, has been an exercise to prepare humanity for war in the event that SIVA, this technological plague, were to ever emerge again and threaten us anew. And it has, uh, one thing that players on last gen consoles should know is that Rise of Iron will not be coming to those platforms. It's only yes. coming to Xbox One and PS4. This is and true. that's because, as you have told IGN, 90% of players are on those two platforms. Uh, it's true that most of our community is on what we're calling current generation platforms. Uh, but this isn't a matter of deciding that that 10% uh, isn't worthy of uh, you know, our efforts. What we've encountered at this phase of development in Destiny with so many places to go, with so many different stories to experience, we've reached a point where in order to deliver new content and tell new stories and let them explore new environments on the legacy generation consoles, we'd have to start subtracting from the experience that they already know. Uh, and there are still people who are going through the original Destiny experience for the first time. And instead of diminishing that, what we've decided to do is sustain it in its current state, deliver the new content on the current generation platforms. You'll still be able to play Destiny if you're on a PS3 or an Xbox 360. When Rise of Iron launches, uh, it'll still be something that you can enjoy on the uh, legacy gen, but Rise of Iron is a current gen exclusive. Got it. Uh, so you had to make that decision to add the new content. Yeah. Uh, one thing Bungie is also known for is fantastic multiplayer. You created Forge with Halo. Yeah. What new modes are you adding in Rise of Iron? You mentioned new modes, maps, and features. Yeah, that is essentially, I mean, with Lord Saladin as the central figure in this new campaign, you know that the Crucible is going to be an interesting place to be. Uh, we're going to be unveiling uh, the full suite of uh, Crucible features later on this summer. As you said, there is a new game mode uh, for Guardian versus Guardian combat. Uh, right. There are uh, some new maps, and you know we're going to be doing some interesting things to make sure that people enjoy returning to the Crucible and enjoying, enjoying some healthy competition with their friends. A suite of features, that sounds quite, quite promising. Um, so why don't you tell us a little bit about these new armor sets that we're getting. We've seen the raid set, yeah. we've seen the campaign set that we'll get, where you become an Iron Lord, and the new trial set. Yeah. What can you tell us? Well, I mean, the Destiny player experience is all about creating a unique character, uh, upgrading your character, making it more powerful, and uh, the things that people equip, uh, the weapons that they wield, really sort of defines them as a player. Uh, at a glance, you can take a look at a Guardian and say, this is a champion of the Crucible, this is a hardcore raider, this is a person who has sworn fealty to a specific faction. And uh, we're going to pay off all of that across the entire spectrum of the player experience. So no matter what you love about Destiny, we're going to have those new things for you to do. And you know, adding those things to your, your vault, you know, adding new weapons to your arsenal is a huge part of you know, the evolution of your character. And with an expansion or even with you know, a game update like you saw with the April update, we like to give people new things to aspire to. And we're doing that in just about every facet of the things that people love to do with Rise of Iron. Speaking of things to aspire to, you have Galahorn. It's yes. coming back. That was a weapon you actually took out of Destiny because you felt it was too powerful or like people were like, if you don't have Galahorn, you can't do the raid. How are you implementing it this yeah. time where it's going to remain? Well, it was just something that we didn't bring forward into uh, the second year of Destiny. Um, it's still in the game. 
people can still use it if they love True. it. Uh, you know, those still old activities that you can, you know, if you if you feel like you want to take down Atheon in the Vault of Glass, the Gallerhorn is still at your disposal. Uh, you know, we're still finding that people are, you know, playing their first raids even to this day, you know, and that's a great way to experience old content is with someone who's never experienced it for themselves. What we're doing with the Gallerhorn in Rise of Iron is we're bringing its power levels up so it'll be a relevant implement of destruction against this new enemy. Uh, so the Gallerhorn is now the product of a quest. And this is really my favorite thing about the fact that the Gallerhorn is returning to prominence and relevance, is the fact that people aren't waiting for it to drop. They are participating in a very specific quest where they get to forge their own weapon. Uh, they get to recover relics and shards of armor from fallen heroes, and they get to build their own exotic rocket launcher. So we're removing so much of the angst and the uncertainty over how do I get it? When does it drop? Is Zur ever going to sell the Gallerhorn? Zur should never sell the Gallerhorn. Now everyone has a real cool sense of ownership because the Gallerhorn is a thing that they made. It's a product of their action and their adventure. So people know how to acquire it, they can go after it, and once it's theirs, they know why they have it, and they have interesting memories from their own gameplay. Is it going to be a legendary or exotic this time around? I believe it's going to be uh, another exotic weapon. It always has been exotic, so I believe that's exactly how it's going to uh, behave. Got it. Uh, are there going to be achievements or trophies with this release? You know what? You've stumped me. You don't know. You've stumped me. I do not. I do not know. But uh, as soon as I as soon as I get that information, I will whisper it to you through the back channels of the internet. Uh, Destiny is all about community, so I reached out to some prominent community members okay. for their Destiny questions. We have a tough one up front from Gathalian. Uh -huh. He says, "Where is it here? The content drought of year two was hard on the dedicated community. Post yeah. Rise of Iron launch, can we expect a more robust and significant stream of content?" and investment opportunities. Thank you, Gathalian, for that question. Sure. Uh, you know, we're going to create content that we feel is worthy of the passion and the enthusiasm of our community. Uh, we're going to create content that we feel meets our standards. You know, we've invested a lot of you know, love and passion into the creating a world that you would want to explore, uh, creating the things that you would need to build a character that you care about, and uh, we're going to do those things steadily, uh, but we're going to make sure that we do it right, and we're going to take the time that we need to do that right. At the same time, the live team is still committed to making the world of Destiny an interesting place, uh, a world that calls you back into the world of Destiny to do and enjoy new things. Uh, I can't commit to a specific cadence. I can tell you that Rise of Iron is coming out uh, September 20th, so that's something to look forward to. Uh, just yesterday, we had the June update, uh, which has, you know, sort of done some class balancing and, you know, weapon tuning, new chroma colors came online, so we're always working on Destiny content. Uh, the promise I can make is that we're committed to making sure that the Guardians have a fun place to explore and to express themselves, and I'm excited about what the future holds. Holtzman from Planet Destiny asks, yeah. could you give an approximate size to the Plague Lands, larger than the Dreadnought, similar to Venus? Uh, the Dreadnought is a new landing zone in old Russia. Uh, in terms of the actual size of it, um, you know, we're in Enjoying you some just of our said the first dreadnought is a new landing zone. I'm you sorry. Plague Lands. Yes, the Plague Lands is a new landing zone on Earth. So for the first time, what we've done is we're taking an existing destination and we're creating a new place where you can put your boots on the ground. We've all landed in old Russia many, many times. It's the first time you know you ever played Destiny. That's really where your adventure began. What we're doing now is going beyond the wall. We're going beyond the Cosmodrome to explore a new landscape. Uh, in terms of the size and scale of that, what I'd like to do is save that for another reveal where we actually you know, invite the community to see the Plague Lands and, uh, and we'll show them you know, where those boundaries are. Got it. Well, we have some more community questions, but we're going to save those for Fireteam Chat, which we're recording tonight with you guys. Yes. So stay tuned for that. Deeds, thank you so much for coming on the show today. Thanks for having me. Guys, if you want more on Destiny, you're already in the right place. IGN.